Well, 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 welcome back! So this is the pens that we're gonna try to uh, copy today. Believe it or not, but this was actually quite an expensive pen. From a designer brand, but it's actually meant to look like a board short. It's not just a super good sewer or not such a super motivated sewer or something in between like uh, yours truly. You might want to take something with a thickle, like elasticated waistband. You know, you have a little bit more freedom with the thing. Step one, seam rip, rip seam. Look, this pen is a lost case. So I'm completely gonna disassemble but it. If you do not want to annihilate your pens forever, forever, you can copy it onto a paper pattern, but with an elastic waistband, it's gonna be quite challenging. So if you're not experienced with patterns, follow my method, take a lost case and take it apart. It will be much easier. I get up the entire waistband, but most elasticated pens do not have a separate waistband. Instead, it's cut on. In that case, you can just open the stitch and unfold it. Gotta open almost every seam of the pens and hot tip. This sort of unusual flaps coming out of the side seam. Now is the moment to take some photographs. This is like um, breaking it down is easy. But we still gotta remember how to build it back up. <laughs> This is not gonna be a complete seam ripping tutorial. Since it's a lost case anyway, we don't need to spend hours to get it perfectly seam ripped apart. I'm mostly using my seam ripper to get the back and forward stitch at the beginning of a seam out and then carefully try to rip. And yes, my rather thin fabric damages quite a lot this way. Alternatively, you could also cut with your fabric scissors right along the seams, but then don't forget to add seam allowance later. Also get off those stitched on back pockets so we can really copy every part of the pattern. As well as the front pocket which have zippers in my case which i would not rip and you really might have to search a little bit how to get all the stitches loose fun but don't worry i also have good news just like a sewing pattern we only need to have one of each part so you only have to do basically half the pants yeah. which now that i think about it makes the pictures maybe a tiny tad redundant because we're leaving half intact anyway anyway you can't never prepare too much Ta -da. pocketing and i don't mean the verb as in wow that pocket is pocketing it's the special fabric they use for you guessed it pockets it's a different color than the actual fabric which is why they're sewing these facings inside long story short i'm gonna make the pockets of the same fabric as the outer fabric so we can just copy the whole pocket two times for each side and don't have to worry about sewing this extra square piece and as you see on the inside gently press 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 all your pattern parts mainly to get that seam allowance flat that is folded in so annoyingly at the moment and then there might be parts like these rather unusual flippity flap flop flap flaps that i had out of my hands that are a little hard to seam rip apart so we can just take this shape and add the seam allowance to it later so that we don't have to seam rip them open as well okay free pattern check that was uh sort of easy i actually wanted to upcycle the pants and make it out of old clothing but now that i look at the pattern parts they're really huge as you see a little bit of a red flag which is why i decided to use this sort of leftover curtain fabric instead to make things not unnecessary complicated or having to patch a lot of pieces together i want to get my really practical spray bottle now that i bought for the bleaching project last week you may not be surprised that I just managed to spray bleach in my own freaking face <sighs> and on my clothes so I wonder if I now get spots um, but what I wanted to say is you have to pre-iron the fabric might shrink a tiny tad from the heat so then that's all been done with and over with now welcome to the big pretend game. We're gonna act as if these rags are a normal pattern. The fabric is folded double so that we can get every piece out of there twice. And we have an imaginary grain line. Because as always, we do want to get our pieces as straight out of the fabric as possible. Especially the legs. Usually if you think of the hem as being on the exact horizontal of the fabric, you should be fine. And then it's just a matter of snip, snip, snip. Cut everything out of the fabric. Which leads us to game number two. Avoid the succulents. Hey! Yeah, and don't forget where you haven't seen with it open, which might be the hem or, or pieces like this liberty flap flap. Uh. Uh flap you still have to cut on seam allowance and for a zipper pocket make sure to not cut anything yet simply add some markings on the fabric and you can use a pin to transfer it also to the second part so that we know exactly where to place our pockets later i feel like only my overlocker serger thing looks as chaotic as it does I did have a little bit of a revelation with this today, but it seems like when something is fully enclosed, like a hem or a, something that is fully enclosed, you do not overlock. But if it's free, like the inner legs and there's no lining, of course, then you uh, overlock. Probably best off just overlocking all the edges that are also overlocked in your pants. Alternatively, you can zigzag. Oh my god, not my angle. Then we need some preferably iron-on interfacing. Where we're gonna add our zippers. I'm cutting two pieces that are at least big enough. Markings check. We already done them. 
decorations on fleek. So we know exactly where to add our interfacing. Just make sure to add it to the back of the fabric and not the front. And if this does not look like iron-on interfacing to you, well, you got me. It's, it's not. But hot tip, don't. Mama's doing stupid here. Just use the real stuff. You don't want your sewing machine to keep skipping stitches all the time. So the markings were already there. Now I'm just gonna draw the opening of the zipper where our stitch lines are gonna come. It's two parallel lines, about one centimeter apart. So my pocket is gonna be attached at the opening at the zipper and later in the side seam, but not in the waistband. So I'm just gonna line up one part of the pocket with the side seam. So that the entire zipper opening, AKA the rectangle, is entirely covered. And place a few pins to hold it in place. Let's sew exactly over the triangle, stopping with the needle in the fabric right in the corner, lifting the foot and turning the fabric so that it's really gonna be a nice and sharp corner. Go slow or go home or uh, just use the hand wheel. Make it a little more controllable until you're all the way around. Then snip and cut right in the middle through all layers so that you have the same amount of seam allowance on each side. And when you come to the end, you cut a little V towards the two corners, almost reaching the corners, but not all the way. You do this for both sides. We can turn the pocket now towards the other side and now things slowly start to make a little bit of sense because the pocket ta -da, is on the inside where it should be now if it's looking a little meh don't be pressed just press 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 we want the seams to be flat like a panini but this will make it a lot easier to sew later pressing from all sides so that the slits looking slick on fleek sharp corners and all if there's anything if you see this that catches your attention anything that you notice about this <laughs> A little bit late on like, hmm, maybe it's gonna be a little bit ugly if we have this really pitch black zipper in a white pen. Well, thank God for the piles of clothes that I'm picking off this tree, curating one hell of a mess in my hallway and never know what to do with. Ah, oh, zipper. And if you can't find a seam ripper, be creative. 12 seconds later. <sighs> Cut myself. Or maybe just find a seam ripper. Hey! <laughs> Why am I seam ripper just lying in front of me? Now I'm gonna pin the zipper right behind the slit, making sure everything is lined up well. And apparently I even did a pin on the back side. But don't forget about it when it's under the sewing machine. Then I'm gonna top stitch all around very close to the edge. And what I find the easiest way to do this is to move the needle a tad to the right, if you can, so that the fold is exactly in the middle of the foot, but the needle is sewing just next to it, right on the edge. The zipper is closed. But if the zipper tab gets in the way, you can simply lift up your sewing foot and open the zipper for a bit So that you don't have to bump right over it and ruin your stitch Then we still have this other piece that we're gonna sandwich against it now Good on good side, I guess uh, I did not really pay too much attention to be honest And close it all around the curved edge At the side seam, you can leave it open for now the absolute essential back pockets. Not because anyone ever uses them ever. But they are a great way to make your bum look a little less like a, well, bummer. Decide the correct placement by lining up the pieces well. And using the tried and true, poke a pin and hope for the best method. Get the idea. You should still be able to check where the pocket was folded in, so we can imitate that and pre-iron the fabric in exactly the same way. And I'm also gonna iron in all the other seam allowances, which likely just have a normal distance. This will make it a lot easier to stitch them on later. So I'm first gonna close the open edge. Opening. Pocket hem, I guess. If your fabric isn't that ironable like mine, you might still want to place some pins to hold it in place. Oh, the wonderful mystery of sewing machines. Who knows why? It's acting up like a toddler. Again. Just kick it a couple of times. <laughs> the sewing machine, not the toddler. This was not my idea. It's a little hard to see, but I have two top stitches, one really close to the edge and one right far from the edge. And for top stitching, always make sure that your stitch length isn't too, too small. Because that will most likely look awkward. You can check on your pants how the back pockets are stitched on. There might be two stitches. Mine only has one, but you do need some extra reinforcement. Right in the upper corner. Which in my case was just an upside down triangular stitch. Pin the pockets on the pants. I add a pin right in the corners to make sure that the seam allowance is not peeking out. Which can really easily happen. Start sewing my triangle in the corner, going diagonally upward. Turn the fabric and sew towards the edge of the pocket. You can use the hand wheel for more precision and don't bump 
jump off the edge. Turn again and now I can edge stitch straight down the entire pocket towards the other side. Hand wheel in the corners. You can use a little scissors, kind of just wiping it underneath really. Combined with a slight pull from your hand on the fabric to make sure that all the seam allowances stay folded in very well. To end on the other side, directly continuing in the exact same triangle but now sewing reversely. Then I'm gonna use some iron-on interfacing that between you and me isn't really actually iron-on interfacing to reinforce one of the sides of the flippity flippity flip flaps so that they're not gonna flippity flippity flap too much if you know what I mean. Then sewing the front and the back part together. Guess in the comments what is not quite right about this situation. If you're correct I'll hire you. Disclaimer for an unpaid internship only. You might have to lift up the foot in between to really get a nice sharp curve basically because otherwise you go a little bit out of the direction and you ruin it. Cut in the seam allowance really really well at the curve so that it's not gonna be wobbly once we turn it inside out. <laughs> or outside in. Wait, did you guess it? Did you guess it? Did you guess it? it? Took me a long, long, long time to realize. Oh my god. I didn't sew the right side on the right side. <laughs> Such a classic. I guess you are all right. Adding a top stitch really close to the edge will ensure that everything is gonna look really nice and crisp in the end. Closing the sides of the legs first. Inner leg check. Pressing the seams open well. After the inner leg seam I closed the crotch seam because I didn't really think of putting notches on my pattern. And the fabric might have even stretched a little bit under the surges. I do want to be a little extra mindful that the pattern pieces are lined up well. And of course the inner leg seams exactly meet. Now hot tip. When you close the crotch seam what do you do? Iron it open, right? Wrong, wrong, wrong. wrong. But every seam, you have to iron open, right? Wrong. Again, wrong. Again, 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 again. Okay, point being, we might iron the seam open a little bit at the top where the waistband is, but we're not gonna iron the entire seam open at the curve, because this will result in notorious pancake butt. <laughs> Because I have those. Flap it, flap it, flap, flap, flap. Water is a little bit different than a normal elasticated pants. And the waistband consists of a front and a back side, which usually would be probably one piece. So I'm first gonna sew the back waistband, good side on good side, onto the back of the pants. Which, if you ever made a pants, should make sort of sense. Having the outer leg seem still open. Same story for the front side. Sewing the waistband against it, good side on good side. Look, I see the big boys sewing without pins, and I'm like, I can do that too. Wow, wow, wow. And then tend to change my mind halfway. Now the things are going into the side seam, so I have to mark the fold of the waistband, which will be the top of the pants, so that we know how to line up the wings, uh, things, uh, flaps, in the outer leg seam. So I first pin them to the front side, exactly where the waistband is gonna fold down later, making sure the inside of the pocket is lined up well in the side seam too, and then pin my back side to the front side, matching up the back and front waistbands, and pinning down the insides of the pockets well, so that nothing's gonna be missed or fold strangely under the sewing machine. Press, press, press the seams open. This you want to actually avoid that your seam allowances are sewn in the same direction instead of open. But as you can see, it happens to the best of the best of the best of the best. Did I already say of the best? I made my point out. Ah, oh, okay. I'm gonna add a top stitch just next to the side seam, catching all the seam allowances underneath as well. This will improve the look of the seam and sort of direct the flappity flap things forward. So all the seam allowances underneath are now folded in opposite direction as the flap towards the back side. And I'm stitching on the back side, but very, very close to the seam. And only up until the end of the zipper, more or less. To finish the waistband, I actually wanted to try to move all the seam allowances up and have them all enclosed in the waistband, which would hide everything nicely. But since my waistband was already a little bit on the small side, and the original pants I copied also didn't have this, I'm just stacking all the seam allowances together and don't fold in anything. So only fold the waistband down in the easiest way possible, making it very simple to close on the sewing machine. Basically following the first stitch line you did to attach the waistband. But do not forget to leave a hole so that we're still able to insert our fantastic elastic, which I'm just gonna reuse from the old pants, and tunnel through using a big fat safety pin. Which is a little less likely to fall off halfway through. Cause I can't know more with that. Time to release your inner... Hmm. Earthworm, I guess. Never mind. Just find your way to the other side. Both ends are sticking out and I'm gonna overlap them, not stack them. Because I want to keep the seam of the elastic very flat. And then just sew over the ends back and forth. Uh, better one time too much than too little. Just then fold in the elastic. Closing the rest of the waistband. Trying to not sew over the elastic. 
I pre-ironed one centimeter seam allowance in at the hem and then folded in one more time a little bit more to create a rather wide hem of about three centimeters. You can draw markings on the fabric, but you can also just wave your ruler around a lot like I'm doing and hope for the best. Just don't iron on top of the ruler. Don't ask me how I found that out. And just sewing all around the hem. And it's ironed well. You don't really also have to add pins here. It's a cruel, 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 cruel summer. Climate change has arrived in Berlin. Remember, stay upcycling, use your old fabrics, don't breathe, and maybe we'll survive this apocalypse. Yo, let me know, was this helpful? Was this interesting today? Was it boring? What else would you want to see on my channel? Give me some suggestions in the comments, and uh, thanks so much for watching again. Thank you to my Patreon, thank you for everyone who likes, subscribes, and do, does all this crazy stuff to uh, stay up to date with all my super cool new upcycles. And, and it's great if you don't like to wear shorts and look like a little boy or girl you can just wear this and you'll be like a big boy <laughs> or something it's a <coughs> it's a <laughs> it's a it's a <clears throat>